Hey, good morning guys, Tush coming at you. Just coming up to 11.15 on Thursday, December the 29th. And we're back out here to uh, start the grinding on this uh, rear wheel well repair area that we finished off yesterday. So before we get to that though, I just wanted to take you through and answer a question that one of my uh, YouTube viewers asked me regarding what I use to cut patch panels and what I use to grind patch panels. So. Uh, I'll switch you off for a second and we'll go over to the table and uh, I'll show you what I use. Alright, we have a myriad of hand tools uh, sort of laid out on this uh, small little bench here. We'll see if I can get through it without uh, dropping any of them on the floor. So what I've been primarily using for that wheel well, re wheel well repair, say that five times fast, um, is my little Dremel tool and uh, just with this easy lock uh, cut off disc. And I find it works really well if you're trying to follow a contour around the whole way. It's able to sort of follow the contour of the wheel well whereas something like a traditional cutting wheel on an angle grinder you get that sort of big chunky you know straight cut um, that doesn't really work well for that type of uh, patch. If I'm making a straight cut uh, and I can get the tool in there access wise I'll definitely use something like a, a cut off wheel on a traditional angle grinder or We'll use something like, uh, I've also got an air tooled, uh, an air powered uh, angle grinder as well. Um, if that doesn't work, we've got uh, an air powered body saw, which is really good for uh, tight spaces as well. If we're talking about just cutting patches on, out of sheet metal to repair the areas, not cutting metal off the car, I generally use this. So to cut my patches, and this is just a jigsaw uh, with a metal blade. Uh, this is just a Makita jigsaw. And this works really well just to cut the patch panels. And of course, we use the hand shears uh, as the sort of the final trimming um, when we fit it up to the car. So those are generally what I use for cutting. Um, for grinding, I use my uh, angle uh, die grinders quite a bit, or angle grinder. I've got a couple different ones of those with uh, two inch pad and three inch pads. Uh, I use flat discs a lot just on a four and a half inch uh, angle grinder as well. I also use the fiber discs. This is a, uh, I think it's a 24 grit I've got on here. Yeah, that's a 24 grit. So I'm using the Diablo fiber disc. There's a 24 grit. There's an 80 grit for uh, less aggressive. I also like these, um, these Dremel uh, grinding discs as well. Again, they're fairly expensive. They're about uh, eight bucks a piece, but they're really good for for getting into tight areas, and they do job do the job pretty quickly. If you've not seen these uh, Easy Lock Dremels before, they come with this little mandrel here. It's uh, spring loaded. Let me see if I can. So spring loaded, so you can sort of swap the discs in and out very quickly. It's much better than the old sort of screw on type that. Uh, only last uh, you know about 30 seconds before it's done or it breaks so like I said the only drawback to those are they're very expensive other than that uh, I also use a 3M uh, weld grinding uh, disc as well so that seems to work quite well this is just on a uh, I think this is a three and a half inch uh, tool grinder um, it's actually a cutoff tool that I have fitted with a grinding wheel so we also use that as well so that gives you an idea uh, what we're using as far as cutting and grinding. Um, so we'll get to it. We'll utilize, I think we'll utilize the Dremel first and then we'll come back and we'll do some larger areas with probably the 3M grinding wheel. Alright guys, we'll come back. Alright guys, just coming up to uh, 12 noon and uh, I think we're good. I think that looks 100% better than what it did look and I think it's good for another uh, 50 years or so. So maybe we'll just throw a quick uh, coat of primer on that to keep it from rusting and we'll move on. I think what we'll do next is uh, maybe we'll try to tackle this uh, rear area a little bit and see how we can do. And maybe we'll start working on this uh, tail light area and this little wrap around piece here and obviously it looks like I have some lead to contend with here if you remember uh, I was actually trying to uh, weld in this area before 
and I thought I had some brazing but obviously it looks like I've got some lead in there as well based on this cutout. So we'll get the torch out, melt the lead out and then we'll uh, make that repair panel and fix this little tail light area. That's the next step I think. So indeed there was lots of lead in this area as well and you can see it back in there along that seam so we're gonna have to check the uh, trunk fitment when we get to that point because there's a lot of lead in there making up some space so I'm sure we're gonna have a big trunk gap there now so we'll have to rectify that at a later date but right now we're concentrating on this uh, area here so I'm trying to figure out how much of this I need to replace and where it ends so I have fortunately somewhat of a guide this is an old uh, panel off my um, 1960 that I kept and it still has a bit of the area in question so I think from that we can decide that it just goes down and meets up with the flange here come on focus yeah so I guess what we'll do is we'll try to cut out down just below here and we'll come up probably to the middle of this patch and uh, we'll make the little bottom patch and uh, we'll check out what we need to replace from there so that's the first thing we're gonna do ah, let's go crazy change my mind let's cut the whole piece out so we're gonna go ahead and do that all right the patch is made guys we just have it sitting in there loosely so uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, weld it in and uh, we'll move on from there we'll bring you back alright guys we've uh, fixed that um, tail light area and it does looking much better better than that anyway so what we'll do next is we'll repair this section here and I think we're about to uh, repair this area here. You see a bunch of pinholes there. Obviously I need to put a flange on this piece and it's got a curve in it. So I think this might be the first opportunity to use our uh, shrinker stretcher. We'll come back after lunch. Well I just finished shoveling the driveway and now it's starting to snow again. So I guess I'm going to have to have shoveling round two shortly. Not looking forward to it. Alright guys, we're going to continue to play around with this uh, rear tail light area. And if you recall, I ended up taking this piece off. Let me just move that over. Quite some time ago. Uh, I took that off when I was out in the driveway. So I've just uh, put it back in place so you can see what we're working with. So that's what I need to replace now. So I do have a spare pod. As I'd mentioned before, uh, John sent me this uh, off a parts car. So uh, we're going to strip this down and clean it. Of uh, It's got some spare bits of metal on it that I don't require. So what we're going to do is we're going to strip that down and we're going to clean it up. And uh, we're going to see how it fits in that uh, area in replacement of that. So that's what we're going to do now. All right, guys, quick update. We've uh, managed to get all the junk separated from the uh, piece that I needed. So we've uh, sandblasted it and we've just given it a, a quick coat of primer. And we've just got it sitting in there, so it looks like it's sitting in there pretty well. So I'm going to need to do some repairs on here. Got some, uh, obviously all the um, spot weld repairs need to be done, plus there's a little damage here along the flange. So other than that, though, it looks pretty good. It's pretty solid. Much better than this guy. So. Anyway, another job done. We'll uh, move on to hopefully working on this flange down here. We'll do that after dinner. Okay guys, the deed is done. We've now cut this uh, bottom flange piece and it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to replace this. It's got curves a couple different ways. Um, so anyway, we've just uh, cut that out and uh, so yeah, it's in pretty rough shape. We'll have to make a template, see if we can get that fitting back in there. Anyway, I thought I'd just give you a quick shot of that uh, cut out of there.
All right, here we go. So this part's going to be really hard to show you, but um, so there's the uh, outside flange piece, and if you can tell, there's a slight curve to that piece. So what I've been using is I've been using the uh, the shrinker stretcher, and I'm using the shrinker to maybe I can just show you this piece here to make that radius. So all I've been doing with the shrinker is putting the piece in and then it's foot operated to bring the jaws together and uh, basically moving that piece through the shrinker to get that curve in the piece. So depending on how much of a curve you want you can throw it through several times and obviously you use different uh, different amounts of pressure on the pedal to give you a bigger curve but I think that's the direction we uh, are pretty much headed and I think that's going to be pretty good so let's uh, see if I can uh, bring it back to the car and we'll see how it matches up. So I've just got that flange on the outside of the piece that we cut off so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trace on the inside edge to get the uh, to get the contour of that patch so I'm just going to run a marker outside the edge there we're going to trim it I'm obviously doing a half distance patch that this will actually capture two of the uh, holes that will hold the fender on so that's what we're up to but I'd just give you a quick look at that all right guys just wanted to give you an end of night update so we've got a couple pieces bent in there and I think you can really probably see better now what I'm talking about as far as uh, the benefit of the shrinker getting around that corner you can see a pretty good bend in there now so uh, we just got it tacked in there really really loosely but you get the idea obviously we can trim the uh, flanges down to whatever size we want after the fact so um, I made these pieces with the intent of removing them um, to drill the holes in them um, let me see if I can remove this piece here so you can see what I'm talking about so Again, I'm going to have to have holes in this flange that pass through to this plate that has the cage nuts underneath of it. So we'll have to mark those out as well. And uh, once we figure out how this is all going to go back together. So again, that piece is going to be removable, but I thought I would just uh, give you a quick shot before I go in for the night to let you know uh, how we're doing on that piece. So. I think that'll be it for tonight, tonight guys. So we'll get out here tomorrow and uh, hopefully finish off this section. That's it for tonight. See you tomorrow.